It's Bar another edition of the UTPA Baseball Show. My name is Jonah Goldberg. This is the man, the myth, the legend, Manny Mantrana. The Hello, Jonah. Coach. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Uh, Bronx coming off of a, uh, what's a three and two week now, five games since the last time we've spoken to you. Bronx took three out of four at the Algal Tree Classic and then uh, dropped a sleep depriving heartbreaker in 11 innings to 15th ranked Texas. Uh, I know the Texas game is the one that's on your mind. It's the one that's on mine. I know normally we go in chronological order, but I got to start there. Uh, Texas uh, is a team that you know, Bronx are still er, Bronx teams and coaches have been trying to figure out since 1971. That was the last time the Bronx uh, beat uh, the Longhorns. It was in the NCAA regionals. It's back-to-back uh, sh -back shutouts actually to send the Bronx to the College World Series. Since then, it's been all Texas, which is something that's. It kind of it's kind of striking because baseball is the one sport in which that kind of thing doesn't actually usually happen because on any given day anybody can beat anybody else and it, that usually does happen. So it's it's an amazing streak and uh, you know, last night two to one in eleven innings had the lead uh, with two outs to go uh, technically with one out to go I guess since it's a sacrifice fly that gave them the lead with uh, in the or tied the game in the ninth. So um, just how, how has that game been uh, you know afterwards? How, I'm sure you've been thinking about it a lot. Well, it was it was a long ride home, Jonah. Uh, pretty much for the five hours it take, took us to get back from Austin, or five and a half hours. Kept thinking about jumping off the bus, uh, and I forgot about it for a little while. Now, this morning, because I was busy doing some paperwork, getting ready for Lamar this weekend. But since you reminded me, <laughs> uh, I might just uh, stand up, go outside, and, and find the first moving car and, and, and get in front of it. But you know, we had him one nothing uh, for eight innings. Uh, we bought in. Uh, Halton, Clay, uh, he's our closer. Unfortunately, um, Clay was not at his best last night. Uh, he walked the first two batters he faced. We pulled him out. Um, they tied the game, um, and then we eventually lost it uh, uh, in 11 innings. But, um, you know, we played well. Um, we quite didn't get the, uh, the job done, uh, and it's been quite a while. You're absolutely right. In baseball, it's kind of weird. We're, you know, 40-some-odd years, I guess, since the last time we beat Texas. But, uh, you know, the time is coming. Um, we look forward to uh, playing them and competing against them again one more time. They're, they're a great ball club. They've got a great uh, Hall of Fame coach and Coach Garrido. Um, and, you know, they're where we are working and aspire to be one day. So it's going to continue to be a lot of work. Um, but uh, it, the time is coming. And despite the final result, I think, you know, there, were, there was a lot of positive reaction from Bronx fans and supporters on social media after the game and this morning as well. And, uh, you know, talking about how, you know, how your team, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Texas about how, I mean, there were, you held Texas to two hits uh, over the first nine innings of the game. Neither of them actually had anything to do with the scoring, and only one person had those hits, so everybody else in the lineup was held hitless. Uh, and just how, how well the pitching and the defense uh, played in that game, it really shows how strong a team this can be. Exactly, and that's what uh, we kind of talked a little bit about that after the game with the guys. Um, I thought our pitching, beginning with Alex Henson, it was his first start at the Division One level. Um, he, he threw uh, six innings, uh, shut up ball. Uh, Kyle Tokenager came in, had a one, two, three inning. Uh, and we brought in Austin Costas in the eighth. Got into a little bit of a jam, but got out of it. Um, and then going into the ninth, unfortunately, that's uh, kind of where our pitching let us down. But our pitching has been pretty good uh, for the most part all year, Jonah. Um, and our defense has been pretty good um, for the most part all year. Um, we just have to work at understanding once you take the lead, and especially late in the game, how to protect that lead um, and how to finish the job. So that's one thing that, that we have to work on with this group. Um, but they're a good character group. They're, they have a very, very good work ethic. Um, they're consistent. They produ they're productive every day in practice. So we look forward to what uh, the rest of the year holds uh, uh, for us this year. I think the, uh, the defense has to be one of your top pluses from that game. I thought that it was, it was outstanding. Uh, you start with... Uh, third inning, Alberto Morales, barehanded play. I'm not sure I've ever seen him do that before. He just charged in, one motion, fired a BB to first. Reminded me a lot of Jonah Goldberg when I, when, I, when he would play third base. But you're right, that was a major league play. I mean, it was a big, big, big time play. Uh, and not only uh, with Mo coming in and making the play, but the footwork that Victor at first base, because mm -hmm. I mean, the runner was coming, the ball was coming at the same time. The footwork that our freshman, Victor Garcia, uh, had at first base uh, to record the out was unbelievable. And like you said, Morales, Really good. Uh, Chewy Garcia oh, uh, yeah. played outstanding defense. Our little freshman for, that we put in for defensive uh, purposes late in the game, Omar, 
uh, with a runner at second, dove to his right, uh, stopped the ground ball, and threw out the base runner at first. I mean, we had some good plays. Uh, Huckabee a couple times, balls in the dirt, uh, threw a guy out at second, then picked one back off at first base. So our defense played well. Our pitching, uh, for the most part, you know, was, was excellent. Again, we just have to teach this group to make sure, you know, once we're in the lead, we have to be able to hold it. And a big part of that, Jonah, is, uh, you know, getting the right closer in. Uh, you know, we've tried different things. Uh, Clayton has been decent, um, you know, pretty much for the five, five and a half hours on, a, on the trip back from uh, Austin yesterday. That was basically what I thought about is kind of putting the right guys in the roles that are going to help them succeed, which in return will help us win. Yeah, um, you know, you, bullpen, obviously, there was, besides that hiccup, I mean, it was mostly zeros. Uh, you know, we talked about Tokenaga and Casas. Uh, Tokenaga came in and throwing BBs. I mean, it was 90, he was in the mid-90s easy, and, uh, you know, I haven't seen the gun, but, I, you know, just with my eyes, it kind of looked that way. And then, you know, Casas worked out of a jam. Uh, Tanner Dickerson, he didn't allow a base runner except for the one intentional walk, although, he, and, you know, he allowed the inherited runner to score, but it was already there that, uh Oscar Flores, I mean, that's two outings in a row. He's looked real good. You're absolutely right. And, it, you know, beginning the year, Jonah, we would have never thought that we would have had uh, freshmen coming in late in the game, um, in a tight game at Texas. Um, you know, you want to kind of bring him in slowly. Um, but, you know, some freshmen can do that. Uh, Tanner has proven in the outings that, that he's had that he can throw strikes and he can keep us in the game. And Oscar Flores is, uh, you know, he doesn't have overpowering stuff. But he keeps the ball down. He throws strikes. Jonah, he throws three pitches for strikes. Um, and he's fearless. I mean, both of those freshmen come in, and in their mind, they're throwing 98 and 99. And that's what you need. You need that confidence, and both of those guys have it. And you know what? They're, uh, they're moving up in the totem pole as far as uh, work out of the bullpen. So um, we're, we're happy with those freshmen. Um, we're happy to have, see them have success. And then we're, we're going to count on them a little bit more and more as the year progresses. And of course, your bullpen will get bolstered in another way as well. You know, think about this weekend, you have a three-game series. Um, and then, you know, once the WAC season starts, especially, it'll be three-game series on the weekend. And what we learned over these last five games is you have five really good starting pitchers for three spots. You know what? We're going to be we, – we feel we're going to be a lot better during the midweek games uh, just for that simple reason, Jonah, as you mentioned, that instead of having four conference games like we used to in the Great West over the weekend, there's only three, which means that you'll be able to save a lot of pitching for the middle of the week. Um, and one of those pitchers is obviously one of your better pitchers. Um, so we feel that, uh, you know, our midweek games this year, uh, we're going to have a lot more success than in years past just because our pitching uh, was so depleted um, after playing four conference games. I mean, it really takes a toll on you. So, you know, we're playing in a conference where we play four games. Uh, and basically all the other teams that we play around here in Texas, um, all those conferences are three games. So there was no doubt that they had the advantage going in middle of the week uh, because their, their pitching staff – uh, didn't have to work so much during the weekend, and they can save some pitching for the middle of the week. Yeah, now, I mean, on the weeks that you have one, one non-conference game, then one of those five guys ends up in the bullpen. On the week that you don't have any, then uh, then you've got two two of them in the bullpen. And, you know, obviously, once you reach the conference tournament, it's a huge advantage to have five guys who can, actually, who can come out and start because not all mm -hmm. teams are going to have that. But for now, I mean, that really gives you a lot of, uh, headaches and trying to figure out who's going to start, but also great options, great problem to have. That is a good, uh, those are good headaches. As, as a head coach, you want those headaches, uh, just like the position players. You want the headaches of uh, who's going to play what. Um, and this is really the first year where, where, where we've been able to have those good kind of headaches where, hey, uh, you know, we have this, these guys on the mound, we have these guys playing. Now the key is just kind of putting the right people in the right place, Jonah. Uh, some guys can be very effective out of the bullpen. Uh, other guys can't. Uh, some guys can start, other guys can't, you know, physical reasons, pitch, you know, location and control reasons. Um, so I think we have the pieces. Again, we're just have, we have to put them in the, right, uh, in the right order so that they succeed and in return um, our team will succeed. Now, knowing that uh, over the next week you've got four games, three at Lamar and then the Wednesday tilt at UTSA, have you started to think about uh, how you're going to work out your rotation, who's going to have to come out of the bullpen this time around? Yeah, um, we would, you know, again, uh, as soon as the game ended uh, yesterday, we kind of, again, thought through the process and kind of evaluated where we were and where we need to be. Um, we're going to start Sam Street Friday night. Uh, we're going to move up uh, Matt Harrell um, instead of the third guy. We're going to pitch him in the second game. Uh, Matt Harrell has the ability to be a starter and a closer. Uh, Blake English in junior college, that was his role. He was a closer. Um, we felt he could also start, and he's proven, proven us right. 
Um, but, it, you know, once we get late in the game, we have to be able to close out the deal. So right now it appears that either uh, English or, or Howe are going to be the guys that come in into the ninth inning. I think um, uh, Casas has, uh, has done a really good job, uh, seventh, eighth innings coming in and, you know, throwing his one inning. And that's what you want. You want to shorten the game where your starter can go six, and then you want three guys in the, in the seventh and eighth and the ninth and can each pick, pitch an inning and give, and give you the win. I think uh, Costas has done a really good job of that. I think he's earned the role of either the seventh inning guy or the eighth inning guy. Um, Clayton, uh, he might, uh, we might change him into the seventh or eighth inning role, maybe use him as a starter because he, he's, he has the uh, potential to be a very good starter. But uh, you're absolutely right. We're working on, on you know, moving the pieces around to make sure um, that we're successful. And that'll start with, uh, with Lamar. Obviously, Street will be our Friday night guy. And then we're still undecided about Harold or English, but we're going to give Harold the start. Um, and we're TBA as far as who's going to start for us on Sunday. A lot of good options. And, uh, you know, I'm sure wh whoever gets it, I mean, you, know, you probably already know you're going to get a pretty strong outing. Exactly, exactly. Th those are good options, Jonah. And, and we're looking forward to uh, seeing who, uh, who rises to the top. So let's talk more about the, the fun games from the weekend. You know, taking three out of four of the Owl Eagle Street Classic. I mean, it started Friday night with, I mean, Sam Street was one batter from being perfect and ended up uh, with a two-hit shutout of uh, Northwestern State. Sam was unbelievable. Um, he really, um, you know, for those eight innings, he got into a little bit of a trouble uh, in the ninth, worked, worked his way out of it, um, typical, typical Street, um, and we won, uh, won nothing. But I think... Uh, for those eight innings, that that was one of the best pitched uh, games that I've been associated with in co collegiate baseball, Jonah, um, in 18 years. He did a tremendous job, and like what, and like what, and like you said, he was one one guy away from uh, from being almost perfect. But we know we have a good one in Sam on Friday nights, um, and we feel we'll have a couple good ones for our second and third game in the uh, once a whack tournament begins. And then, uh, you know, the very next day. For the first time in uh, 42 years, you picked up back-to-back uh, -back one nothing wins as Blake English. You know, we talked about him a second ago, but you know he went eight shutout innings, four hits, a walk, and uh, three strikeouts. And I mean, there were, over the first two innings, just watching him throw, there was a second there that I started to think, you know what, he might be trying to outdo Street, which is no easy feat. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I kidded him about uh, about that on Friday night after uh, we finished the game, and I told him, hey Blake, want to look at the scoreboard? He goes, yeah, I know, Coach. I, he says, I know, Coach, with a smile on his face. I have to compete against that. Um, we went, did a pretty good job of doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, he threw eight really, really good innings. Uh, and then we went to our bullpen in the ninth. And, and again, back-to-back 1-0 one, one wins, which, you know, that's not, uh, that's not easy to do, Jonah. To uh, hold a team down to, uh, you know, nine innings of zero baseball, um, it, it's tough. So we were able to win one nothing back-to-back uh, -back games. So we were... Uh, we were off to a good start in the uh, Ogletree Classic. And uh, in English, I mean, he, you know, he had got that bases loaded jam in the fifth with two outs. You had the bullpen up, and then he gets out of it, and he ended up retiring the final ten batters he faced. You're absolutely right. I thought that uh, he was a little off at the beginning of the game, Jonah. I thought his last three innings were probably the best three innings. I think he got in a good rhythm. He got in a good groove. Uh, started uh, a little bit better feel for his breaking ball. Um, but you're absolutely right. I thought his last three innings were a lot better than when, uh, than his first three innings. And then, uh, you know, throughout the weekend, one, one theme was Alex Howe. You know, as Street was whack pitcher of the week, Howe was whack hitter of the week. Uh, he, this, this was, you know, he, he started hitting in the first game. He had a couple of hits, including your lone RBI. But this was his first of three straight three-hit games. I mean, he had two all of last year, and he gets three in a row here. Ended up 11 for 15. That's a 733 batting average. Yeah, he had a, he had a tremendous, tremendous weekend, uh, Jonah. Uh, I was just putting in the quality of bats uh, this morning from the uh, from the tournament. We were waiting to play the Texas game to get him all in, and he was remarkable. I think uh, he was uh, something like 14 out of 17 or 15 out of 17 quality of bats. That's just just you know in Division One baseball, that's amazing. Um, and he you know he continued uh, yesterday at uh, in Austin too. He had uh, three good at bats, um, so he's really on fire. So you know, I gave orders to the coaching staff, uh, beginning with myself, to stay away from that guy. You know, we have a guy hitting line drives and P rods all over the place. Jonah, I don't want to get next to that guy. I want to keep sleeping. So um, when he comes and he says hello, I say hello. I turn around and I keep walking. Walk, so. <laughs> but uh, he had a tremendous, tremendous weekend. I um, mean, you know, how's a tremendous student? Uh, great work ethic, good character, young man, um, and and he deserves uh, everything that he's uh, that he's getting. Well, um, 
Alex Howe, you know, you, you mentioned he had the good at bats against Texas. You know, he, he ended up, uh, he, he didn't end up uh, pulling out a hit during the game. Uh, but one thing that, that I really liked that you did was uh, you had a situation, it was, it, it was fairly early in the game. It was the, what was it, the third inning, I think, maybe? Uh, when you had, you had runner, no, it wasn't the third inning. Maybe it was. Well, whenever, yeah, it was the third. You had uh, two on at that point, and you, and he showed bunt, pulled back, and swung away. And you know, I've noticed that a lot of times in that situation, you will bunt uh, the runners into scoring position. They were first and second at the time, and uh, you, ha and you had him fake and swing. And although he ended up flying out to left field, I still think it was the right move, even if it didn't work, because I mean, the way he's been swinging the bat, why not let him take a shot at it? Yeah, he's he's definitely our hottest hitter, uh, and you know what what you're trying to do offensively is to add a double play, Jonah. That's that's your biggest killer on offense. On defense, you're trying to get the double play. That's your biggest friend. So we do a lot of things on offense to uh, do what we can to stay away from the double play. I just didn't want to bunt Alex over. I mean, he's our high, our hottest hitter. Um, and when you go to play to, you know, to a place like Texas, uh, and, you know, or A&M, TCU, uh, you can't be afraid to be aggressive. You, you yeah. have to bring the game to them. If you manage and if you play tentatively, you're not going to win. You have to be aggressive. You have to go out and, and take the game. Uh, so I thought it was a good situation. Alex does a good job of, uh, of slashing. Uh, we work on it a lot in practice. It didn't work out, but I thought it was a good option. Um, and again, I didn't want to take the bat out of his hands just by uh, laying down a sack butt. Yeah, you have a chance for a big inning in Texas. you got to go for it. And you know what? He still ended up scoring a run in that inning. And yeah. th you know, that was the important thing. Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, so back to the weekend. So you're two and zero. Then your second game of the day, Saturday, Northwestern State. Um, you know that that was a game. One bad inning. I mean, you know there was the they, they scored three runs without the benefit of a hit. All of them unearned, but you know they count stay on the scoreboard. And but other than that, I mean, again, it was the same thing. You had a lot of base runners, a lot of hits. You know, Matt Harrell. It was maybe not as good as his first start, but he pitched. He pitched okay, and then Tanner Dickerson had a really strong three-inning relief outing. That's a, that, that's the thing. I thought uh, Tanner came in, and again, uh, in a tough situation, um, did a nice job for us. Uh, we started the inning like uh, we kind of we've done. We've we've started three innings that way, and it's and it's cost us three games. We have to stop that. That's uh, that's going to be. It has been a big point of emphasis with our guys. Um, you know, if you walk the, the leading lady or you hit the the leading lady, Joan, that's not good. But you compound that by you know, giving another free base to the second guy in the inning. Uh, you cannot do that. Because eventually you might get uh, away with it one or two innings, but eventually it's gonna, it is going to catch up with you. Um, and it has caught up with us. Uh, I thought uh, that our first weekend against Corpus Christi, we should have been three and one. We ended up two and two, one inning cost us. Uh, I thought with the uh, Coach Al uh, Classic, the tournament, uh, we also should have been three and one. Uh, that inning cost us. And the big one, you know, last night, that one inning also cost us again free bases. You cannot afford back-to-back -back free bases uh, because eventually it is going to catch up with you. But uh, Tanner did well. Uh, I was proud of the guys um, that third game. Uh, we were down and we had the opportunity to win. We had the bases loaded in the ninth. Uh, we just couldn't come up with a big hit. But, you know, that's what you ask for in the ninth inning, a chance to, you know, bring in the whoever the hitter is with a chance to win the game. Um, and they rallied. They loaded the bases. We were one hit away. Um, from another win, but I was proud of them. They didn't give up. They battled, um, and it just didn't go our way that night. Yeah, you get, uh, you get two on with one out. Alex Howe hit the RBI single, and uh, a bat by Alberto Morales after that. I think it was like a 10-pitch walk to load up the bases, and it, that walk included a 350-foot uh, foul ball in there. That's right. That's right. He pulled. He pulled it foul. And you know, we, all the the changes and the uh, and the uh, the managing that went on to get us to that situation. Unfortunately, you know, we had a lot of changes. Uh, it was a little bit of kind of unfair. We had a freshman up there in the ninth inning with the bases lowered in Edgar Cordon. Uh, and he's going to be a pretty good little hitter for us. Uh, he's strong. He's got some pop the other way. Um, but, he, you know, he did not start off or originally in the lineup, but we had to make some changes to try to, you know, get back in the game. Um, and he struck out. He struck out. And then Dylan also, Engelhart, uh, didn't start the game, uh, that game. But he had this, the opportunity to, and he didn't come through. But again, I was proud of uh, our guys that battled, and that's all you can ask for, a chance to win in the ninth inning, and, and we did have that chance. And what we started to see in that game was, uh, uh, you know, you'd been getting hits, but you just hadn't been scoring runs, so you got four in that game, and then 
kind of started to carry over to the next day as your team scored early and often while dropping nine runs on Prairie View A&M. That's right. Um, you know, the biggest thing of that game that uh, we took out of that game, Jonah, was uh, discipline. Um, we didn't swing out a, whole, a lot of bad pitches. We didn't try to do too much. Again, you know, rule number one in hitting is you have to get a good pitch to hit. And if you don't get that good pitch to hit, you know what, take the walk. That's good team baseball. Um, and we had, you know, double-digit number of walks. Uh, I thought our team, our team discipline was uh, was good. Plus, we also got some timely hitting, which uh, we were able to put up nine nine runs on the board. Yeah, Thirteen walks, which was uh, the most the Bronx have had in uh, a few years since uh, I think it was 2011. And uh, then on the pitching side, you know, he kept them in check. Andrew Padron, in his first career start, uh, he he looked like he'd been there before. You know, Andrew threw uh, five good innings and. In. When you have a freshman like that, um, you know, either starting the game, Jonah, or coming to relief, you want to pull them out when they've had success. You don't want to leave them in there one extra inning where, like with Andrew, he had five really good innings. You, you know, throw him out there in the sixth inning and he might have a bad inning, go to the bullpen, and that's what he'll remember. What you're trying to do with the young guys is give them a little bit of confidence, put them out there, let them have success, and then pull them out. Uh, so we did that. Uh, and, again, for five innings, I think uh, Andrew's going to be a – uh, an outstanding pitcher for us in the next four years. He did a nice job, um, and he, he is figuring into the plans either as a starter or he's another candidate that he would be a good bullpen guy because he's fearless, uh, tremendous competitor, uh, holds the running game really well, Jonah, feels his position, and the biggest thing, he throws a lot of strikes. So a uh, three and two week. Uh, right now your team is at uh, five and four, heading into the weekend, four more on the road before getting back home. Lamar's a team you, you faced last year. Uh, I don't know how much of their personnel is still there, but was there anything from, from last year that sticks out about them that you can use this weekend? You know, we, we, um, we would bring, we've been going home and away. Uh, a couple years ago, we went to their place uh, for three games. They came to us last year for three. Uh, we go to theirs this year for three, and then next year they're coming back to our place for three. Um, they're a well-coached team. Coach Gilligan, the head coach, has been around for a very long time, Jonah. Uh, tremendous coach. Um, a lot of wins. Uh, I mean, I like going there. Uh, talking to him about baseball, coaching against him, just like I really enjoy the challenge of uh, going up to UT and, and, you know, matching wits against Coach Garrido. That's uh, growing up, those guys, uh, Garrido, Gilligan, guys like that were my idols. Um, and when you have a chance to manage against them and have your teams compete against their team, that's a great thrill for me. So I expect Lamar to be a tough three games. Uh, can go either way, but I expect for our guys to go out there and compete. Um, and hopefully at the end of the day, we'll be able to uh, – to come back with some wins. Okay, Coach. Well, we wish you a lot of luck this weekend. Thank you, Jonah. I enjoyed being here. Thank you for having me. Bronx are visiting Lamar at 6.30 on Friday. I think it's 6.30 Saturday and 1-ish on Sunday. To double-check those times in my memory, visit utpabronx.com, where we'll also have <laughs> links to the live broadcast and the live stats from Lamar. To, to, to your uh, benefit, you did have a long, uh, long day last night. <laughs> he was with us all the way to Austin. We got back here around probably 2, 2.30 in the morning. And he was, I received an email from him already at 9.30 in the morning. So, uh, so you're okay. I think it's a 2 o'clock game on Saturday. But two. to your benefit, it's, it's been a long, long two days for uh, Jonah Goldberg. It'll start sometime after sunrise and before <laughs> the end of the day. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> He's Benny Ventrano. He's the head coach of the UTPA baseball team. My name is Jonah Goldberg. We'll be back here next week with you right here at 956sports.com.